Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic and in this tutorial we're going to be covering constants, strings, and a bunch of functions that you can use with strings. So uh, allow me to point out that between the last video and this video I changed my input variables to just x and y and all of them are now strings and as for the two text boxes uh, there they now are whatever information you put in there are now converted to strings instead of singles since we're going to be dealing with strings anyways so allow me to explain constants really quickly so basically you use the constant constant keyword const when declaring a variable so I'll call it z and you set it to whatever data type you want and constants basically what they are is there some sort of variable that you declare and initialize at the same time so you can set it equal to a number or a string or another variable and once that happens it can never change over the course of the runtime of the application it cannot change so you have to um, initialize it at the same time as declaring it and if we go down here for an example and throw in z plus equals I don't know, 6 and click away notice how we now have an error it's underlined it says constants cannot be the target of an assignment that's because well we cannot change their values so that's about it for constants there isn't really much I want to show you with that so let's get into strings so basically we're just going to be messing with whatever strings we put in there so I'm gonna just be messing with one string for now so let's get into this uh, so the first function I like to show you with strings is and and sure I could just set this equal to a string and just mess with it and whatever but I'd rather use our own strings because that's more fun but anyways the first one I want to show you is the a the whoops did I spell that right I don't think so the ASC and basically what that does is it converts first character of a string to its corresponding numerical value yes um, a little bit complicated but basically it's gonna read your string and whatever the first character is it's gonna convert it into it, its number it, its value and as you'll see uh, num numbers that are strings will not necessarily convert to their the number that you think and you'll see that in a moment so I'll go label output dot text is equal to and then I'll throw an ASC and then inside that I'll throw in our variable X so if I click save and then I run the application and I throw in like Apple 97 is returned that's because A's numerical value is 97 you throw in B now it's 98 you throw in D it's 100 and basically it keeps incrementing up by one if I put in like zero less I don't know um, so basically it's going to be looking at the zero you get 48 if you throw in a one it's 49 uh, a two it's 50 and it keeps going up by one but as you can see z the zero as a string is not zero numerically it starts at 48 so we will learn about data type conversion in a future video not yet but uh, an old method of converting from if you're looking for integers in a string and you want to convert them to actual numbers you would take their value like we are right here and then you would subtract 48 because no matter what it is like look if you throw in 5 which comes out as 53 well 53 minus 5 is uh, excuse me 53 this would come out as 53 minus 48 is equal to 5 and that's how you would fetch that information so that's about it for uh, that one. The next one I'd like to show you is the length, or len, whoops. So returns, returns number of characters in string. So that's what the length is. So if I throw in len as such, save, and then build and run. If I throw in apple again, I should get five, because there's five characters in the string and that's about it for length there isn't really much to show with that one and the next one I like to show you is the is numeric whoops there we go is numeric and basically what that does is it'll return a boolean value of true or false whether or not whatever you typed in is a number so if I throw in 456 notice how it's converting it as a string right right here it's converting to a string but it's going to tell us if it's a number or not 
So we get true. If I throw in in the midst of this, for an example, D, which is a letter, now we get false because it's no longer a number. And that's about it for that. And is numeric is really good for like an if statements, for an example. If you're doing character counting, going through each character to see, like maybe you're combining this with the ASC and you're just trying to just convert whatever numbers are inside of string. So that's really, really nice. Uh, and that's about it for that. The next thing I'd like to show you is uh, concatenation. Actually, let me uh, throw in the last one is numeric, true, false, whoops, of whether string is a number. Okay, so now the, now the next one is not a function. So, sorry I scratched my nose, so my voice must, must have muffled. Um, co concatenation is combine two or more strings using either a plus sign, which is what I'm going to use because all programming languages pretty much use the plus sign, or the ampersand. But I'm going to use the plus sign because pretty much all the other languages use that. And I would rather teach you what, you know, what you should, what you'll most likely be using in the future. So let's concatenate two strings. So I'll have both of these, uh, I'm going to be using both of these now, and I'll just throw in x plus y. So I'll click save, and then when I build this, I'll throw in something like, hello, my name is, and then space, so make sure you have a space there, and Adam. I click calculate, and now it concatenates the two strings. Uh, also bear in mind that if you ever create a string in here and you plan to have it uh, concatenate, um, please, or I don't know, you are, and then whatever your name uh, you want to concatenate with or something, when you create a string, make sure you leave yourself a space in case you want something to continue right after that. Otherwise, the two strings will be right next to each other, the two characters, and, well, you won't like that. So that that's concatenation. The next one is the compare. Whoops, I forgot to have the two little parentheses in here. Uh, for the compare, what you do for this one is you type in strcomp, so string compare, and then you throw in um, two strings like this. Boolean value of whether these strings are the same. I hope I spelled everything right. And so we have both of these and then we'll be using our total again. Actually no, we don't have to use the total yet. So for this we'll be throwing in strcomp and the two strings we want to compare, x and y. So I'll click save and then I'll build this. So I'll type in high and high. And we get zero. Zero is the boolean value of true. If I type in BYE for um, buy, now we get now we get one. And actually, you know what? This is backwards. This is okay. You know what? Um, this is a little weird. You'll have to think a little backwards. Boolean values usually one is true and zero is false. So this is actually backwards. Um, I have no way of telling you how to remember that because obviously I didn't remember that. Um, I was just dumbfounded. One in Boolean value means true, but for some reason here, uh, if they're different, it's going to give you one, while if they're the same, it gives you zero. But zero usually means false, and one usually means true, but this is a rebel. Um, opposite Boolean value. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so yeah, do that. So that would work out. The next one I'd like to show you is um, containment, and basically it'll look for whether or not uh, the second value is in the first one. So I'll put down in string like this, and checks whether y is in x. So it's something like that. So in here I'll type in I N S T R. There you go. I'll click save and I'll build. And I don't know, I'll type in something, uh, I don't know, B Y E and B Y. So I'll calculate and you know what? Now it's actually true.
because buy is in buy because it's checking the y and see now it's giving you a one is true I, that's just weird but if you go the other way around now we get zero which means false so um yeah is boolean value so weird stuff but there you go it's i guess you can blame microsoft for the confusion with this one this one's a black sheep i'm telling you and what else do i want to show you substrings so this is the last one i'll show you and it's dealing with substrings and this one uh is a little weird uh you know i'll just i'll just show it to you like this so you type in MID with a dollar sign, and then within that, you type in the variable name. I'll put an underscore. So the first piece of information you put in there is the name of the variable. Um, the start position for where you want to start the substring, so you can get a piece of it. And uh, how many characters thereafter that you would like to include in that. So... Uh, so yeah, I don't think I need this. So I'll click save, and let's see here, what do I want to do? Uh, oh yeah, let me just throw in some parentheses, uh, substrings. And then in here, I'll throw in the MID, the weird little dollar sign. And we want to mess with X. Let's say we want it to start with the second character and go for how long do you want to go three characters I think that should work so I'll click save and then when I build I'll throw in I don't know my last name Huntley I'll click calculate and what happens is it started with the the um, looking at X which is this it started with the second character which was the U and then it went for three characters long uh, one two three and that's about it. Um, I want you to bear in mind that when you uh, work with this, I, w I want you to know that you can always make these variables as well that the user can control. You know what? I have time. Let me show you. So y is equal to c string. I know. I have, I have time this time, so I'll actually do that. Dot text. So you can do all sorts of things. And then make this right here. Either one of them y. Let's do that one. So I'll press F5. And then I'll type in my last name again and let's go let's go for this time so I click calculate and see it didn't just go UNT it went UNTL it did four because it yeah so just just remember there's all sorts of different things that you can do with it with these and uh, yeah this is really I this is really fun we're really learning how to do lots of things so just remember um all these kind of things I'll leave it right here so you can look at these and copy these down and um, there's there's resources on the internet if you'd like to learn more and don't forget a textbook. Um, textbooks really help too. They're they're definitely a necessity, especially for learning something harder like Visual. Excuse me, um, C plus plus or Java. Sorry, it's late. I'm getting tired. But yeah, I hope this tutorial was useful for you, and uh, I'll see you next time.